Well, welcome back to Chadwick TMD. And what I'm going to run through today is hopefully some of the complications that uh, are encountered when running Train Controller. It's a computerised program. There are other ones around, such as um, JMRI and uh, iTrains. And this is a little bit to do with um, block occupancy. And if you've um, split up your layout so that it has some automation, then block occupancy is fundamental to how the computer controls your trains. So, the Hymek is now underneath the hill, uh, underneath the town scene over this far end. It's about to come out uh, from the tunnel. There she is. And she's pulling a small rake of 16 tonne mineral wagons and a guards van. And off she'll trundle. and through underneath the hillside. Now, as you can see on the other screen, there's another camera recording down here, and this is the main screen um, of Train Controller, which has just gone to sleep, sadly. And the Hymek is now uh, in one of the back, side, back loops running along here. It will go through in, onto this block, and then it will trundle through there into this block, and then eventually come out from underneath the town scene and uh, come through these blocks here. What I'm going to do this time is stop it at the, at the where the boards break in half. So we come zooming back over here a moment, and there comes the Hymek. And we want to stop it here. Whoops. Okay, so now we have the Hymek is on one board and half of the train is on the other board and it's spread across two different blocks. The trouble is when you look at the screen over here that other block there's the Hymek is sitting here but half of the train is in that other block. There's three mineral wagons and the uh, the guards van. So how does that work then? Well sadly if these things now break away and the Hymek goes off the Hymek won't understand that the tra or the next train won't understand that the train that the rail is blocked. So the best thing to do is to allow the rest of the train to draw current and the way we do that is by fitting resistors into the train. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this guards van, put a couple more trucks on. Now these, these mineral wagons have a small 10k resistor fitted, which therefore, as they draw current now in this block, as you can see now on train controller here, the block is now occupied. So let's set the train off again. And as we watch it on the screen, this becomes occupied and there's the back of the train. That will then go off. The train's now underneath the hillside. It should come around and then into this part of the loop. And again, this is still occupied because the back of the train is drawing current. Right around the back and then right around to here. And what I'll do this time is we'll stop the train um, on this section again. Now what we'll do with train controller is I'll split this train as if we had um, a breakaway and then get train controller to automatically move the train. So what I shall do is I click in the Hymek box, click the drag and drop symbol and take the Hymek and put it into this block here underneath the hillside. The machine ramps up and the Hymek will move and obviously those three wagons will be left behind. And then as it arrives in that area, the Hymek will stop. 
Now what I'll do is I'll get the high mech again, but this time I want to drag it and drop it into the block where those wagons already exist. Now you can see by the yellow line here, that's the route the high mech is going to take. When it goes pink, the high mech is in that section. But this one instantly goes green because there are no wagons behind the, uh, the high mech that have this resistor fitted. And it will trundle around here and then come back out of there, but hopefully not run into this block because it's occupied by those trucks. So she's underneath the hillside, uh, sorry, the town scene. Now the train, uh, the Heimlich normally picks up speed as it comes out of this tunnel because um, it looks better. And then hopefully it doesn't crash into the rest of these trucks. And that's how train controller and other programs will work if they know that a block is occupied. If I then remove those items of rolling stock, the Hymex should then come into the block where train controller asked it to go. So that's how we get the desired effect. Right, so how do we do it? How do we wire these, uh, these pieces of rolling stock up so that they draw current? Well, let's get started on the wheels. Um, the procedure I do, the first thing I do with the wheels is I give the rims a clean, um, get that, those nice and shiny, obviously, because um, for the electrical contact. The next thing with a back-to-back -back gauge, I check that the, uh, the distances are right. There's no point in doing after you've painted it because you could well remove the paint when you shove the gauge in. The next thing I do after that is I clean off the axle paint across the middle. Um, obviously most of the axles you buy today are metal. The, um, the old ones, the plastic axles, clearly you don't need to um, clean off the axle, the paint, you know, to reveal the metal. Um, that, that, those, I, I really can't find those available anymore. Every, everyone's I come across is metal. So clean off um, uh, the axle paint, um, then glue on, when, uh, glue on the resistor. Um, once the resistor is, 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 uh, is bonded, then paint on the conductive paint. Test it on the track. There's a failure rate around about sort of 20%, which just need a, a, a dab more paint um, to make the, the circuit, and away we go. Okay, this is the fiddly bit. Well, hopefully with this aid of this um, wonderful drawing, as you can see, here's the, uh, here's the cross-section of the wheel, and in red, I've kind of drawn the... Um, uh, the plastic insulator that stops the current passing from the wheel into the uh, steel axle. So, we first thing we do is we take off the the anodized the black anodized paint from around the the axle. Um, and the reason to do that is uh, sometimes the the super glue will actually melt the paint, and you might get con, con, uh, you might get current flow where you don't need it. But, but just take my word for it. So remove the paint, and then on the end without the res without the resistor. What we do is just paint on some uh, conductive paint, so from the, the wheel across the, um, the plastic insulator um, onto the axle. And do that in a couple of places um, and then turn onto the other end. And now on the other end, what we do with these tiny resistors is what I found the best way to do is to glue the resistor kind of here. And you'll find, you'll see the electrical, the electrical connections are on the, the ed edges of it. So glue, if you glue it in place here, obviously there'll be a big blob of super glue in here. And then with the conductive paint, then you just kind of um, paint from here onto the axle and again from the wheel onto the edge of the resistor here. So obviously then you get um, current flow uh, through this um, 10K resistor. So that's the cunning plan. Now these resistors aren't expensive, um, I think you get about 200 for around about £2, so they're kind of a penny each, um, and hopefully from this 
with this uh, postage stamp you can see the size of these resistors so there they are um, these tiny little things here are the resistors um, and compared to a first class stamp now you can see what size they are they come on a strip and all you do is peel the backing paper off and they fall out and these have obviously taken the ones out of here and these are the ones we're still with capacitors in uh, sorry with the um, with the resistors in so these are small you definitely need uh, a few specialist tools such as a decent pair of tweezers um, to move these things around of course it's not always coal trucks that you need to do this to this is a I've got a rake of uh, Backman tankers and I've taken off the wheel so I'll start on this one here and the first thing I do is with a flat file is I take off the paint from the axle which is quite straightforward um, and the reason I take the paint off is um, to allow better conductivity between the paint uh, and the axle well, once I've glued the, the resistor in place and this only takes a few minutes um, I, think, I think the best thing to do is to do these in batches so let's say you've got uh, you want a half a dozen to do is uh, like I say bring them all off at one, in one go clean them all off um, as I said start with cleaning the, uh, the wheels and check the back to backs and then uh, glue on the resistor and do the painting okay that's that bit done so I mentioned earlier was to uh, make sure the wheels are nice uh, the rims are nice and clean so I just use a piece of uh, a piece of emery cloth and run around the run around the wheels next thing is uh, is just to check the back to backs on the wheel and this one's good and then do uh, do that initial cleaning and the rubbing down on several wheels at once and then you're ready to go with the uh, with the gluing of these um, these resistors now in the past with the conductive paint I've used a silver type paint um, but what I found it was uh, it was too thin when you paint it on so what I've gone over to um, is this stuff here it's bare conductive electric paint um, and as usual I'll leave uh, sort of links to all these in the description but this is more of a thicker paint and then I paint it on with a cocktail stick um, and it seems to do the job much better the silver paint it seems to be very thin and getting from the wheel over to the uh, resistor is, is quite difficult uh, hopefully this is all in focus uh, we'll close right up now you can see there is the resistor this is the uh, the axle which I've cleaned off and this is the t kind of target area here where I want to glue the uh, the resistor across it so with a drop of Rocket Max super glue um, watch your fingers on this I think I did a previous video where I glued my fingers together much to my own embarrassment so I try to put a tiny drop of Rocket Max in there pair of tweezers on the on the resistor pop the resistor onto the glue and hopefully you can see it pop that one to one side and go straight on to the next one a drop of glue another resistor if I bring him in you can see it and then put him in the same place hopefully you can see it there and then I wait five ten minutes for the glue to make sure it's gone off and then start the painting well I've waited around about ten minutes for these to uh, to dry and I just give them a little prod uh, with a cocktail stick and they seem to have uh, seem to have taken on quite well so my next uh, step is the paint as I mentioned using this 
uh, this um, bare conductive paint, what I do is I squeeze out a little bit onto a, a piece of paper and then with a cocktail stick I'll do the side without the resistor first uh, hopefully you can, if I can wiggle around so you can see this so I get a dollop it on a cocktail stick and they just kind of paint it on to the uh, bit too much there paint it on to the shaft uh, the axle that is and then onto the wheel back and then paint it straight across the uh, the plastic bush. So let's bring that back in a little bit. Plastic bush. Okay, okay so that's that side done. Then we turn it round to the other side and so you can see hopefully. And then with the tiniest drop now we go onto the end and just onto the end of the resistor. and then onto the top end of the resistor from the wheel. And this is the advantage of using this blackish, thickish paint because you tend to have got a better bond. Right, that one seems okay. And the second one. So the first thing is just the uh, the conductive end without the resistor to paint it across from the from the wheel across the plastic bush and then I want to drop more paint and again hopefully you can see the resistor if you can so I'm going to paint on from the axle up to the base of the resistor and again from the wheel onto the top of the resistor. Now the paint starts as it's in its uh, its liquid form it's not it's not conductive and then it becomes conductive after about 15 minutes. Now hopefully you can kind of see that. Right, I'll come back to you in 15 minutes and we'll test them out. Okay, it's about uh, 20 minutes later now so, and the paint's gone off and what I want to do now is put a metre um, across these uh, axles and see uh, what readings we get. And we should get at least 10, uh, 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 10k because that's the, the value of the resistor. Right, so, so from wheel to wheel Try and get it right. And uh, what have we got? Yep, ten point. I think it's ten point two six. Trying to read the wrong way around in this in this uh, screen. So that's good to go. And the second one is ten point six three. Beautiful. Um, if you find that you've got an open circuit, then it, um, and let's say this one had one, then if you do a con continuity check then between, um, let's say if this, this is the side with the resistor, so if you do a con check between uh, this wheel and the axle, um, and if there's no continuity, you know that it's the paint um, on that end. If you have uh, continuity and you don't have it between the axle and this rim, then you know it must be the paint um, across the resistor, um, so you might have to revisit it. One word of caution, and that is that the that the circuit has to go through uh, the resistor. If for some reason you bridge the resistor, and then the current will just go, simply go through the paint onto the axle and through the paint onto the wheel, then this will get rather hot. And I'll try to show you this, if I can move this out of the way. And this is what happened uh, to me uh, a good few days ago before I realised um, that uh, the, the resistor needs to be on the end of the axle, not in the centre. And the bottom of this truck, of this 16-tonne uh, mineral wagon, kind of melted away because the, um, 
the electricity wasn't running through the resistor, it was simply running uh, straight across the axle via the paint. The axle became hot and melted it. So that's the word of warning. So when you finish, put a meter across the axle and make sure you've got at least 10k, uh, 10K resistance because obviously you've got a 10k resistor in there. Okay, over to the layout. Well, here we are back on the layout and uh, I've reinstalled the laptop and there's train controller and then hopefully you can see that at the bottom of the screen there are these four um, green blocks and the joins of the board come straight through here so those four blocks are all empty and if we zoom out a bit and those four blocks represent these rails. So we have uh, the front one on either side and the rear one on either side, which are obviously the front, well, the front ones are these two and the back ones are those two. And then if I place on the rails, uh, the axles with the, uh, the 10K resistor fitted, and then as you can see, the block indication then goes from pink, uh, so from green to pink, and on the back one, it's just, oops, it's from green to pink, and which obviously shows uh, there is current flow through those uh, 10K resistors, and so therefore we've got block occupancy and everything seems to be working. What I do now is I leave those transistors in place for around about 10 minutes just to make sure, uh, sorry, those resistors, I, I leave these wheel sets now in place for around about 10 minutes just to make sure they don't get hot um, as I did previously, I had that little accident when, when, uh, when the conductive paint was running the power rather than through the 10K resistor. So I leave this on for 10 minutes and make sure all is well and then refit them to the rolling stock. Well, hopefully that all made sense. And if you've got any questions, then please add it to the, to the comment section at the bottom. If you've enjoyed the video, then please hit the like and the subscribe button because it's only by getting the likes and subscriptions um, that the people like me who make these movies, it gives us more kind of incentive to do so. Everything I've used is in the show more tab. So if you hit that button, um, it will bring up the list of where I got the paints from, the resistors that I've used and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And I'll see you at the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.